If you're not having fun, then what the hell are you doing? Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Athlete Podcast sponsored by Sports for Champions. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Team GB's Georgia Carmichael. How are you today, Georgia? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Um, if we could start, I believe that you started kayaking at 10 years old. Yeah, so it was just a kind of local sports open day. Uh, went along and I lived on the river at the time, so I kind of saw kayakers a lot. And it was the time of the Olympics and we won gold that year. Wow. So I started when I was just 10, um, just at my local club and kind of everything went from there. Like a duck to water? Exactly, completely, really? completely. Um, is it something that any, anyone in the family had done or is it just being so close to No, it? so I come from a family of kind of rowers, so everyone's been around water sport. And I mean, yeah, having lived next to the river, my family involved in the river, so it's kind of second nature, I guess. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about the difference between rowing and kayaking? How yeah, it's, it's a common question, difference. common yeah. question. So kayaking, you tend to have like kind of, well, you go forwards and rowing, you go backwards is the... Kind of easiest way to tell the difference but kayaking you also tend to like have one blade with kind of two paddles either side and then rowing you have two blades uh, separately right i see and which do you think is more difficult uh i'm not sure because rowing obviously there's a bit of an element where you can't see what's behind you um and kayaking obviously you are going forward so i will go rowing but yeah. i don't i don't want to be biased yeah. sounds, sounds like a big debate that we yeah don't, oh, don't completely want to completely into. um were you always athletic as a kid yeah, so I struggled a lot with ADHD as a child, so my mum put me in sport pretty early days and that kind of settled me down and I was always doing, you know, a different sports club, whether it be hockey or anything, like I was always doing something. Do you remember much about school sports? Uh, yes, yeah, so I was always on the hockey team and swimming um, and obviously later I kind of was more involved in the water sports and kind of went into sailing and anything to do with water, basically. Oh, wow. Um, do you remember the first sort of moment when you realised, I'm actually, I've got a real talent for this? Yeah, so I remember I was probably about f- kind of just under 14 and my brother came to try kayaking as well. I remember beating him and he's five years older for me, so that, that was like a, a big that, moment. That must yeah. have been amazing. Oh, and I thought, no, I, I'm going to do this sport for sure. Like, That's I brilliant. finally beat him at something, so yes. I've got a sister who's five years younger than me and the thought of her streaming <laughs> yeah. past me in a kayak would have oh, killed me, I think. Honestly, best feeling. I'll never forget that. And he, he still hears about it to this day. Oh, yeah. Every family party, I think, had been bringing that up. Oh, completely, definitely. completely. Um, and then I think you were picked up by Team GB only a few years having first got into the water. Yeah, so just 13 after competing at nationals where I won in kind of my category. Um, I got onto like the national pathway program and started competing and training with GB from there so quite early days wow do you remember the first time going down to GB or yeah so they're based in Nottingham mm-hmm. um so I remember kind of that then started to become my second home I was there most weekends training and I remember the first time I went I felt so small uh, and obviously you know in the junior category at just 13 I was kind of very young and but no it was amazing was there a big st- step up in level yeah, and I think it was a big, like, obviously, kind of everything then I had to focus on, like, nutrition, obviously balancing it with school and, like, my GCSEs and everything. It it was a big step up, but I was very well supported, luckily. So, so, so was that be in the Aquatic Centre in Nottingham? So it's the National Water Sports Centre, yeah. so it's at Home Pier Point. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that is where British Canoeing are based. So. Yeah, so I've been there and the facilities are amazing. Yeah. Um, absolutely incredible. Was that uh, your first time sort of seeing all those kind of facilities? Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, and I remember, obviously, like, my first race there again it just felt surreal like I very much had like imposter syndrome I was like I shouldn't be here but it was amazing incredible and I loved it um what's your training like at that age because obviously you're still young still developing um do you do gym work or is it just totally all in the water yeah so we do do gym work it's all kind of overseen by like physios and specialists and obviously like you know the club like GP and everything now we like it gets serious but we train three times a day which is obviously quite a lot at that age and balancing school as well um, and then every weekend I'd be in Nottingham from kind of Friday to Sunday so it was a lot how do you balance school I think for me like actually having the training the structure really helped with balancing it because as long as I managed my time well I could fit it all in and you know I didn't want to kind of fall back on my studies because I still had aspirations in that sense and you know I needed a backup plan um, but obviously for me secretly sport definitely took the priority but um, it was just yeah about time management really Makes sense. Um, is, was school, like the academic side of things, something that's always been important to you? No, not really. Like at first it, it wasn't. But then actually I'd say as I started doing sport, I become became much more disciplined in my academic side. Like, um, And I definitely started like taking, you know, a bit more of an effort towards school and that really helps as well. And I then started to have dreams of what I wanted to do in that sense and go to uni and everything. I think it's definitely important to have both. Mm, completely. 
Um, and then I think you were 15 when you won the world championships. Can you tell us a bit about that? <laughs> yeah, so I was actually kind of, you know, the underdog. I went to this world championships just at 15 in the junior category, so under 18. So I'm sat on the start line, a little 15 year old next to these 18 year olds that had a lot more experience than me. And it was uh, a marathon race. So I did flat water kayaking. So it was like 20 kilometers. Um, 20 kilometers? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thought of even walking 20 kilometers. I know. And also, we have like a heat, a semi, and a final still in this distance across two days. It's a lot. I mean, and wow. we also have the short race distance as well, which is just 5k. So if you're making it, you're potentially you're going to be going up to 65k that week. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot. Um, and I remember coming out of the heat, I actually fell in in the heat. And because wow. our boat's very narrow, it's very easy to do and I ended up falling in. And I thought, that's it, it's over. But I managed to make a sprint finish and get into the third, which was the cutoff. I needed to go into the final. So I didn't know, like I had no expectation going into the final. I kind of thought, you know, I'm going to give everything into it. And yeah. It was neck and neck with one other girl. Uh, and then it was a photo finish. We had to wait for 20 minutes to find out who'd won. Oh, wow. Uh, and then, yeah, it was me at 15. And see, so, yeah, I became the youngest to have ever completed that, which was surreal. I mean, I couldn't believe it for about a week after. I mean, it was That's crazy. absolutely incredible. <laughs> Did you have family there watching? Yeah, yeah. So I had family there watching. It was all live streamed, of course. So everyone was watching as well. So it was, it was nice. It was amazing. And then when I came home, a big party to celebrate. And then it was straight back to training. There you go. Um, yes. I think that's what separates the week from the children <laughs> straight back in there oh, um, I can imagine that your parents may be agonising over that photo finish did they have an idea of who won no like it was so close I mean we're talking like like inches I mean so small um, so no one knew and I, I kind of am mentally prepared like okay it's probably her like just I didn't want to get over excited but I think in the back of my head I was like please let it be me and so yeah I mean when they announced it over the tannoid it was incredible so I can imagine um so obviously having it's a bit of a meteoric rise and being the youngest uh, world championships winner at that time yeah um you're kind of on a trajectory really for olympic fame and then you kind of you've had an accident uh, just a year later yeah yeah so obviously yeah i continued everything was going so well like i was winning world championships europeans uh nationals and then in the december of that year unfortunately i was in a freak accident and ended up with a brain injury so I was in hospital for quite some time, kind of relearning everything again. You know, I was left unable to talk, I couldn't eat, and I relied on round the clock care. Um, so it was it was a different kind of battle, but I just treated it like training, to be honest. Like, you know, I'm just training for a different thing. Like I wanted to walk again. I was trying to get my life back at just 16. Uh, and 12 months later, I, I, I left hospital. I was still in a wheelchair at this point, um, but I went home and for me, all along, the thought of getting back in my boat had kind of get, got me through, and I was like, I just want that feeling. And, you know, the feeling of go, going across that finish line at Worlds got me through as well, the motivation. And two weeks after going home, I did what I was told I'd never do again, and I got back in my boat. Um, still unable to walk, but, you know, from there, I think that light at the end of the tunnel seemed a lot closer. And, I mean, six weeks later, I was taking my first steps, and then... 18 months after the accident, I was back on the start line for World Championships, which, wow. I mean, if I listen to what people said, and they'll see the doctors, and I should have never been there, but I'm very grateful I was, and yeah, just getting to that start line was an, a huge achievement for me. It is an incredible achievement. Um, <laughs> how much do you think uh, your, your sporting endeavours helped with your recovery? Obviously, you said it was your, it was your motivation. But yeah. Do you, think it, do you think it actually changed the way your body was recovering, if that makes sense? Completely. I mean, I was lucky. Obviously, I probably had more muscle mass going into it. And obviously, like, I was spending months in bed. Like You do lose a lot, but I had more to begin with, which kind of mm -hmm. put on my side. And also, just the mentality of being an athlete. I mean, we were taught from a young age, like, hard work is what gets you anywhere. So I think for me that was a big part in the determination. And as I said, I just treated it like training, but for slightly different. And you know, I'd make sure I'd go into every physio session prepared for that session, and you know, like you wouldn't train and give everything to that session. And then I just kind of saw it as you know what, if in three years I'm still in this situation, but I can look back and say oh, I've given it my all, then I'll be okay. I'll be happy. Um, and I can I think sport probably is the only reason I I made the recovery I did, um, and it probably saved my life at points. But yeah, so. So I mean, presumably you've you had sort of faith that it was going to come round to the way of eventually it did. Um, did you have people telling you that it wouldn't? Yeah, I mean, my parents were told in the early days, like, say your goodbyes, like she's not going to make it through this, oh, wow. um, and I had a lot of complications at the time. And then, kind of, when I was coming round, I was still very confused for quite some months. Um, being told, you know, you're not going to walk again. You need to give up your dreams of the Olympics. Like, you're not going to have the life you had before. I think at first, like, it was a big shock. Um, I kind of, I'm a very stubborn person. 
So I kind of took that and used that anger to put it into rehab and prove them wrong, I think. That was, and as soon as I started making bits of progress, I was like, I think I've got this. Mm. Yeah. That's absolutely incredible. <laughs> um, and then, so you, we touched on it just before, um, you were kind of straight back in the water presumably only a few weeks after getting out of hospital is that right yeah so two weeks later i, I was convincing my mum to sit like just let me sit in my boat just let me sit in my boat and she was like okay you can sit in it you can't paddle anywhere i mean as soon as i sat in it i was paddling off down the river i mean that was it that was it for me and i think that moment is probably one of the biggest in my life like just that feeling of being like i'm gonna do this like, i've made it i've got this was an incredible feeling um what do you think it is about being on the water what does it give you for me, it's like, so I've never been a good person at meditation or anything, but for me, kind of, you know, if I've had a stressful day or anything, I just go out for a paddle and I find just that connection to the water, I'd shut off from everything and I'm just so kind of, I guess, in tune with the water and the feel of the flow. I find it a really relaxing sport. Um, obviously not so much when I'm competing and it's very painful, but I don't know, it's just the movement of the water. I love it. Um, so, yeah. And then from your recovery, um you went straight back into competing did you notice any difference to how you were sort of obviously you'd have to build up your strength again <laughs> yeah. and things like that but were there any major issues yeah obviously like coming back in you know I was a bit older I was still in the junior category but it was uh kind of towards the end of it so I was like this is gonna be hard to make a comeback um but I was determined to do it and you know I was had a lot of support which was nice and um I remember going it was kind of the national selection first and no one really knew I was back training I kind of kept it on the down low I wanted it to be a a bit of a, a sneaky moment uh, back on the start line and ended up winning. And I think that was a big moment. I was like, okay, hey, I've definitely got this now. Mm. Um, I think I, I was a lot stronger mentally this time. Uh, having been through what I did, I think it, it equipped me better mm. in order to deal with the race pressure and everything. I think it, it really helped me become the athlete I was. Do you feel um, more resilient now? Yeah, yeah, completely. I think, although, you know, I look back, I'm like, I wish it hadn't happened. But at the same time, a lot of positives have come from it and so many new opportunities that I can't really dwell on it at all. Um, and there's so many positives that I can focus on. It's a great way to take things. <laughs> yeah. um, I know we're fast forwarding a little bit now, but uh, mm. I think by 19, you'd sort of achieved your first Olympic selection. Is that right? Yeah. So then obviously yeah, I was just training, went off to university to study physio and um, at in kind of 2021, end of COVID, I was selected yeah, for the Olympic selection team. So we were gonna go abroad and compete and I was training full time and it was my career again, which was good. How did that come about with the Olympics? So basically you do like a national selection um, to be selected within Great Britain to then go abroad and get selected as a country. Mm. Um, so a bit of a process, but I mean, that was a big moment. Obviously I was only 19 still, so it was really positive and kind of my dream was, I was like one step away, which mm. was amazing. Um, and then I think, <laughs> so unfortunately, uh, another accident. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It was actually two weeks after, so November 2021, I was involved wow. in a whitewater kayak accident um, that left me kind of, yeah, fighting for my life once again. Uh, my parents were told again, you know, prepare for the worst and stuff, but they were very determined, you know, they thought I'd pull through yeah, and they were there. You've for, done it once before. I know, so why I know not? exactly. Second comeback. Mm. Um, yeah, so in this time, I mean, things were slightly worse. Um, the damage was a lot worse and I had a lot more injuries that were quite severe. And I spent three months in intensive care, it's so quite a long time, before I moved to like a rehabilitation hospital um, where I spent six hours a day in physio. So it was intense, very intense. And I mean, at the start, yeah, I was completely paralysed, couldn't talk, didn't really know my name, um, couldn't eat and relied on like a ventilator. Mm. So really unwell at the start. Um, and it took months to see progress. So it was a lot slower this time, months and months went by and no progress and kind of, you know, we had the same doctor saying like, you're not gonna get better. You know, at 19 at this point, they were like, we're gonna send you to like a residential home where you'll now accept this is your life. And right. I mean, luckily for me, my parents were like, no, you know she's young she's got this like mm. she's an athlete she'll fight yeah. and I did and I mean yes yeah, so I left hospital in November 2022 um and at this point I was still in a wheelchair couldn't use my left arm kind of paralysis from the stomach down could talk though and could eat and like live somewhat normality mm. um and that's when you know I was like I need to get back on the water it worked before yeah. so why wouldn't it work again and for muscle memory it's a big part so we contacted rowing, like a power rowing local club, and they were like, yeah, we can get you on the water. At this point, I mean, I couldn't even use the oars to row. It literally was just me strapped into this like adapted boat. Mm. And again, it was the feel of the water. That motivation I got from it um, really kind of spurred me on and gave me that boost I kind of needed to keep going. Mm. And I mean, I started training and by 
like weeks were going past and we were seeing so much progress and by January 2023 I was selected for the talent pathway of rowing with GB rowing um and you know I've now got both my arms and I'm just waist down so it's been a lot of progress in yeah. a short amount of time Gosh. um and honestly it's helped me so much like and obviously training and in the gym it's been the most progress I've seen it's amazing that twice they've told you there's nothing we can do this is kind of just it now yeah exactly and I mean they're twice all they're so wrong yeah they're all about like like probability not possibility yeah. so I guess they had to kind of tell me you know that it's not but um it's kind of it was really motivating proving them wrong and it was only a couple of weeks ago actually I went and saw my consultant who hasn't seen me since kind of May when I was still really really unwell and like the shock on their face was pretty uh, yeah pretty good um quite a good feeling just proving people wrong and I'm very stubborn which which does help yeah of course yeah. um thank god you are um in those moments where um you kind of where they're saying basically there's not much hope and we're going to send you for residential care and it's almost as if they're asking you to accept this is the reality <laughs> now um how much do you think of your motivation so for example if you hadn't have thrown yourself back into training if you weren't so determined to get better do you feel like you'd still be in a similar position now as you were then yeah i think i'm very lucky that you know it would have been really easy to sit there and accept it and be like okay i you know i can live a somewhat okay life like this like but at the same time i think for me i was like i just can't accept that i was like, i'm not ready to accept that i was like give me you know as i said before let me fight a bit for three more years. If I then get to the point where I'm still where I am, at least I can say I've done everything I could. And I thought, I just thought, you know, what have I got to lose? If I give my all, then that'll be okay. Uh, just like I would in a race, so, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> um, what's been the steepest learning curve in terms of adjusting to, I guess, your new normal? Um, I guess like, my new normal now is obviously I am an adapted athlete, so it's a little bit different, um, different training and stuff. And I have more limitations. But like, you know, I find that I, there's always a way. So, and I'm a very much adrenaline kind of junkie. I love like that stuff. And I always get out there and do something crazy. And, you know, you'll see me like flying down some hills in the wheelchair and uh, nice. people will be looking at me like, what are you doing? But <laughs> no, I feel like I can still live the life. I mean, obviously they said, you know, you're not going to walk again and all this, but they didn't say all the things I could do. Like, mm. you know, I'll be doing opportunities like this. I'm going to be doing all these amazing things with charities and stuff like that, that I never would have done if I hadn't have had the accident. Of course. Um, how has your training changed? Presumably you're, you're training different parts of your body and there's different focuses now. Yeah, so I mean, I'm now trying to go backwards, not forwards, which is a big oh, uh, yeah, big difference. But uh, I'm quite lucky. It's quite a lot of similar muscles, so my back and shoulders and everything core. Um, but I mean, rowers definitely do some different training. And obviously I can't do things I used to do to like say the bike and things like that. So it's all about finding ways and obviously in the gym, like that was a lot of like just gaining my confidence again really like being surrounded by able-bodied people and I wasn't like that I think that spurs me on as well because mm -hmm. I'm very competitive and I'll see them doing something I'm like yeah I can do that can I'm do sure that yeah nice. <laughs> and it adds a bit of a challenge and I like a challenge so it's, mm. it's good fun um is there a main part that you're focusing on now for rowing that you weren't before um I guess I mean a lot of it's balance as well because I am still going through rehabilitation you know mm -hmm. I am still trying to learn to walk again and all that so I do have to balance that and my body does have more limitations. So I do, I'm learning to listen to my body more and rest more and the importance of nutrition, mm. which is probably not always my strong point. Um, whereas now I've realized the importance and like stretching mm. and mobility, I never did. Um, yeah, so now that's a big part. And I think it, actually that's quite good that it's taught me that, so. How has your approach to nutrition changed? I think I'm a lot better with it now. Like I know, you know, I need to eat before this session. I need to eat after this session and mm. kind of more structured. Whereas before I'd be like, yeah, I know what I need to eat. <laughs> but and when I would eat it, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it'd be a bit Sometimes more. Sometimes you just need pancakes. Yeah, like exactly. That. I mean, I was like 16. I was like, you know, I wanted cake yeah, all the time. Course, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And just being, and obviously like, you know, 20 and turning 21, like alcohol and all that, I had to be a lot stricter with and stuff. But again, it's all worth it. So. Mm. Have you made a lot of sacrifices? I think over the years, yes. Uh, none of which I regret at all, because I mean, these opportunities of traveling the world, competing the world, like around the world has been incredible. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it was things like, you know, when I was younger, when people started going out partying, I couldn't, I'd stay in and, and stuff. And it took a lot of kind of dedication. And sometimes I really questioned why I was doing it. But at the end of the day, it was so worth it. Um, it seems a bit of a silly question at this <laughs> stage, but what keeps you motivated? For me, I mean, it's, I mean, there's a few kind of factors. I think one of them is that feeling of when I was 15, crossing that line at Worlds and just that feeling of I made it. And then again, getting back in the boat both times. And I think for me, it's almost like I look back and I'm like, I owe 
the person I was a year ago who was struggling, like being told all these things that she's never going to do and, you know, fighting to live. And now I kind of use that as motivation. And I'm like, I look back and I'd be like, if she knew where you were now, that would be so motivating. So I think that's a big part. That's, yeah, absolutely <laughs> incredible to be honest. Um, and in terms of, um, let me do that again because I'm just wish. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, the last thing you said was, uh, oh yeah, okay, about, about, about keeping you motivated yeah. and with it. Um, and in terms of funding, I know that um, I presume that you were a fully funded athlete and yeah. now that it's looking like you're going to have to kind of make it up with competition times. Can you tell everyone a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so obviously yeah, I went from being fully funded and after the accident, obviously and I've also changed sport um, and governing bodies. It's, it's quite tricky as you have to kind of prove yourself to be in the funding. So even though I'm kind of in the team and on the program, um, once I start competing and we get like ranked and stuff like that, then hopefully it will come in a bit more, but it's a long process and yeah, obviously you have to prove you're kind of good enough, mm-hmm. um, especially at internationals and stuff like that. So. Um, in terms of sports for champions, uh, hopefully that we can provide um, loads of events and provide you basically with a way to f- fund your career as well. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the importance of that and the kind of impact that it could have? Yeah, so for me, obviously like, I mean, equipment's quite expensive especially in an adaptive sport and in rowing um and obviously getting to and from is it racks up pretty quick um so i guess it will help to kind of you know aid my training and so we like gym memberships things like that that all you know add up really quickly awesome. and just my training and kind of my coaches and then the payment we have to do for that and obviously then going abroad and things like that and training camps and training kit and everything like that so it will just aid me to in order to like kind of continue my training and aim for my goals and dreams brilliant well that's that's why we do it i suppose um did you have a favorite sporting hero um so probably james cracknell mm. so he was a rower and he actually had a, br- he had a brain injury as well um quite a few years ago and he came back and you know he was quite a lot older at the point but he came back to rowing and he'd made a comeback as well i remember being told about him kind of in the early days of my injury and i thought that was quite inspirational that's brilliant um do you have a favorite sporting quote uh, the one I always go by is when there's a will there's a way that's perfect yeah <laughs> brilliant. and I think it, you applied it brilliantly to, be fair <laughs> to just about everything you've yeah. done so that works um, finally do you have any advice for a young person um, perhaps looking at, to start a career in sport maybe somebody who's um, not able bodied or maybe somebody who's looking at rowing in particular I think the thing is like just always believe in yourself you're always going to have people telling you you can't do this you can't do that but if you believe in yourself then what's stopping you Uh, and I guess that and you know it's hard to give up a lot for sport but it is so worth it and just have fun with it enjoy the training and enjoy the journey I think that's amazing advice Um, thank you so much for joining us today it's been a pleasure talking to you thank you Um, you're welcome and thank you to everyone for joining us at home it's been another episode of the athlete podcast and we'll see you next time thank you Hi guys, hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you did, be sure to leave us a like and a subscribe and check out all our other videos for some more great interviews and content. Bye.